are back again and this time we're going to show you something pretty unique that I don't think most people have probably seen. And what I'm going to show you this time is an embalmer's case from way back in the day, probably the 1960s, and um, it's, it's very cool. I want to share this with you. All right, so this case, let me flip the camera around here. I don't know, it kind of almost looks pretty dark in here. Let me, let me get the light on real quick. Hold on one second. Because I don't see very well. All right, look at this. See, I got my light on. See my spotlight? Mm -hmm. So this case is an embalmer's case. And it's, as I was saying, near and dear to my boss's heart. Uh, I think it was. I think it belonged to his grandfather, and basically, uh, he's given me permission to go ahead and film this and, and show it off. It's very cool. So I'm gonna go ahead and open it up. We've got it flipped around here, so let's just go ahead and flip her. Um, starts off with this buttoned pouch, and there's a metal emblem in the middle. Now this is where it might be hard with the spotlight, actually. It says, manufactured by Embalmer Supply Company. What is that? Westport, Connecticut. Okay, so just in case you can't see with the camera. So I'm going to open this up. Wow. Yeah, that's better that you turned that off. I think actually that was not helping. Or maybe that was my light. Okay. So here are the instruments. Um, Wow, look at this. Look at this, you guys. There, there's some pretty gnarly stuff here. Like, right off the bat, I can see several different trocars. And I don't know. This may be a drain tube. That's not what we use today. Uh, well, not what I use. I use spring forceps, which I thought this was. But that it actually, actually, this right here... It looks like a spring forcep is uh, put over the black here so you can see it is a really gnarly looking embalming instrument. This is a vein expander, and I'm guessing it had on the end of this before it broke off. I'm guessing it had an aneurysm hook hmm. because I've seen those before. These are not really used as well. I don't know. Some embalmers may use them, but that looks like an old. And tool I used a lot back in the day. Here's an aneurysm hook right here. Um, aneurysm needles and aneurysm hooks. One is blunt and one is sharp. So I would not consider this sharp, but there definitely are sharp ones. Because that's where you can like almost remove it. Uh huh. Because you can turn it. Oh yeah, there's probably something under this. Oh wow. I think so. Yeah, you can take the whole thing off. That's what that is. Oh, neat. And this one wasn't locked on here either. Okay, so getting back to it. Um, oh, I know what this is. This, I don't have one of these in my modern day embalming collection, but this I'm almost certain is a cotton packer. So, you cotton packer. You could actually pack someone's ears, nose. I would say ears and nose. Those would be the orifices I would use this for. Uh... Anything larger is going to require something else I'll show you. It's just pretty gnarly looking. And where was this? Wasn't it in here? Mm -hmm. I think maybe we'll yes. go this way. Yeah. Um, and then what else do I see in here? Okay, this is... Um, I think this is a, what they called a groove director back in the day. Again, I do not have one of these in my collection. I do not need it because I am that good at finding vessels. Um, so what this, this I believe, aided in those pesky vessels that didn't want to cooperate with the, the drain tubes. So I'm positive that that's what that's for. Uh, let me just give you a little overview of how embalming works because I could be speaking German anyways for most, most of the people watching this. Um, so in, embalming is the process where we remove the blood while simultaneously injecting some sort of um, preservative, which is a liquid formaldehyde known as formalin. That's Howie. You want to go grab him and tell him we're here? 
And um, so that's, that's why you need these instruments, to be able to make incisions, to be able to uh, separate the tissue and raise the vessels up, um, cut open the vein to drain the blood out of, and inject in the arteries the fluid. Um, oh my, look at that. Yeah, that's gnarly. Now to me, this, this is probably a scalpel. Now I don't have one that looks like this, I'm not going to lie. Look at that. Um, <laughs> yep, I don't have one like that, but that's a pretty gnarly scalpel. And then over here, this is the kind that I have today that I use right there to make incisions. Um, so we got an aneurysm hook. Well, this is called a cannula. And this connects to your hose, which connects to your machine, which is filled with formalin. And this is the actual piece that gets inserted into the artery. Um, always arteries, not veins. We drain from veins and we inject into arteries. And so these holes right here on either side of the cannula, that's where the fluid comes out. So that's what that is. Um, this is really interesting. Obviously we have scissors. Um, we already mentioned the trocar. So I think I went over everything here. And also, in case you didn't see, there's this very fashionable buckle for the instruments. So if you had one, if you were lucky enough to have one of these Titan Balmer cases, you're going to get the fashion buckles with it. All right, so I'm going to go ahead and close this up. I just want to point this out. Look. What? Look at all the. Yeah, the buckles. use. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it's pretty gross. Yeah. <laughs> this is a well used case, I'm sure, from back in the day. Um, so let's go ahead and close that, and I'll go ahead and button it back up. Now that that spotlight's off, I think I can show you that a little easier. Well, I don't know how that's going to come out on the camera, but anyways, that's what it looks like. So then, moving on, I'm going to go ahead and flip this around now, but there's these extra compartments where things can be stored, and obviously, Ooh, that's an old piece of tubing. Um, could have been used for a machine. And then this looks like some kind of, uh, you know, instrument pouch is what that looks like. Something that you could maybe keep more instruments in. I don't know. I don't know what they use that for. Um, here we have, let's open these up. Now this one's cool. It has a name on it. Roy Johnson. Has to be somebody they knew. Probably someone in the family. Mm -hmm. Oh, right on. These are all of our sharps. So, oh, here we go again. Okay. Um, so on this side, we have... A, um, this is for wax, waxing. So this is kind of like for restorative work. Is what that, It's a spatula, is what that's called. Here we have, looks like scissors or small, small scissors, and then here we have another cotton, cotton packer, that's what that could be used for, and then again another, um, so there's the cotton packer right there, and then this is another one of those, uh, vein, ex uh, what do they call them, vein expanders, yeah, I think that's right, and then if we flip it, We've got all the sharps backwards on this side. Here we have a scalpel, and then two scalpels actually. One of them is really gnarly looking, and then we have another aneurysm hook. So I keep saying this, but I'm not really explaining it. I'm going to show you this now. This is called an aneurysm hook. Sometimes you hear aneurysm needle, but I don't think it's that sharp. Um, so anyways, what this is used for is after you make an incision to find a vessel in the human body, you then use these hooks to separate the tissue um, to try and find that vessel and use the hook to pull it up towards the surface. Okay, so that's what an aneurysm hook is used for. And that's pretty much what I use them for. 
Um, okay, this is basically, they would just call this spring forceps, but it's tweezers, basically. And that's everything in this case. Pretty cool, though. Definitely very cool. Um, okay, well, we will fold this up and moving on. Okay, moving on, we'll put that back, and then here is the next thing. Um, yeah, it looks like more of the same stuff. Another little instrument case. Can you help me with that? That would be easier. Oh, okay. So, I don't know what, what this is used for. It almost looks like a restorative art tool. Um, thank you. Tables, same color, so maybe I'll put it against the black here. Yeah, that's gnarly. And you wouldn't want to run with this in your hands or slip on a puddle. Mm -hmm. But yeah, I don't know. It looks like a restorative art tool. I don't really know what they would use that for. Um, and it looks like some more spring forceps, another pair of scissors, and some more, and scabbles, the same stuff kind of thing, little instruments in a pouch. These are super cool, very old tools. And what, what is it behind door number three? This, oh wow, this is a really, I forgot about this actually, this is a really old syringe, okay? Um, first of all, it was pretty fancy pants because it came with its own purple velvet case. And let's just take a look at this beauty. Look at this. It actually has a screw in the middle of it. You just screw this thing, which you did right here with this ring on the end. And you would fill it with fluid. And then you would basically hypodermically treat whatever area you needed to with these these are hypodermic needles that attach to the end of that yeah I guess this is the end I was getting confused because that little stop cock right there so yeah that's that that is really cool very very cool. Very old school. You don't know. You do not see this anymore. You definitely don't see embalmers using that today. What a pain in the ass, and how time consuming that would be. So this is a drawer that slips out. Oh, careful, it doesn't actually come all the way out on this side. And then, oh, oh my God, look at this box. So this is. Let me get over the black here. A really really old box of eye caps. Perfection eye caps by Dodge Chemical. So let me tell you that Dodge Company is still one of the largest embalming supply companies. Um, Pierce, Dodge and Pierce are, are the two big ones. And there's, of course, a multitude of other companies. But Dodge and Pierce are very well known, and they are still making eye caps. And I think I actually have some Dodge eye caps downstairs right now, but the box definitely doesn't look like this. And this is something really crazy. I'm going to show you how they came in the box. They were wrapped in this paper, and I have one right here. Look at this. Isn't that just, isn't that just bizarre? And so each eye cap was individually wrapped. And I'm going to show you what it looks like outside the wrapper. Thanks, Kara. Mm -hmm. She knew it was coming. She's been around this long enough. Mm -hmm. This is the eye cap once you take the wrapper off. Um, now, this looks basically the same today. I don't, I don't use these clear ones. Uh, I, I use the opaque tan ones. I like the look of those better. Um, I just don't want to see that eyeball after I cover it, so that's why I use those. But you might be able to, to note these little ridges I don't know if you can see it. I think you, I think the camera's picking it up okay. Those are to uh, help keep the eyelid clo closed 
So when you pull the eyelid down, you know, that will catch, and in theory it will keep it closed. They work pretty good, actually. Um, and that's exactly what we use today. And then, holy shit. Let me turn the light on for this. i got to pull it out. But, yep, that's exactly what it looks like. A huge saw. And then, what else we got in here? This is a Y valve. So, what, what you would use something like, it's got a stop cock on the end. You would use this for like an autopsy body. You maybe, maybe put that in and grab the iliacs or something. That's what it looks like to me. And then, piece of tubing, and then, yeah, look at this bad boy. Wow! Like, okay, I'm just going to be honest. This is pretty much something that you would, you're going to find this in the coroner's office maybe. And I, and I should actually mention that this, this mortuary used to be a coroner's office back in the day. So I'm not surprised to see this little saw sitting around. Now I, this, you know, I don't really need anything like this for my purposes. But I will tell you that I've had some donor cases where uh, maybe they just took the heart or something like that. And I didn't they didn't cut the ribs and so I didn't have a rib spreader or a saw or anything like that and so I guess that could be pretty handy if you needed it um, but yeah that's not something that's in the normal embalmers case I think that's more for corners use but you know mm -hmm. different embalmers do different things in different places so let's nope it goes the other way you're right you're like, mm -mm. Get it flipped around. There we go. You can tell that once upon a time it had these nice leather straps. I mean, this was probably a really nice case. In, yeah, so. yeah, when it was new. And it's just old, you know. It's seen its time. We're going to pull it up real nicely the way we found it and put it back lovingly. We won't lock it because we don't know if there's a key. But isn't that just something? That's a little sneak peek into something that most people don't get to see. And it's kind of the behind the scenes stuff. So, there you go. That would be the embalm embalmer's repertoire. And that's all we have for now. But we're going to show you the kind of the counterpart to that case, which would be the cosmetic case. My boss was kind enough to gift me with that one. So I have that at the house, and I'm going to show you that. And I'll, I'll go ahead. I have an embalmer's book, too, like from back in the day, an instruction book. We don't use that book anymore. It's a totally updated modern book, but I, I have the old one, and I'm going to go ahead and show that to you as well. So, um, see that? That's how you can tell. Yeah. So, stay tuned. bird on a tree I'm just sitting here I got time